All right, so we're going to talk about two very important and related concepts in economics. Uh, now, it can be very difficult to wrap your mind around these two concepts, so I'm going to do my best to give you a couple of examples and a definition to try and help you understand these, what we call them, economic laws. Also, as we go throughout the semester, as we encounter these laws, I will point them out to you uh, so that you can get a better understanding of these concepts throughout the entire semester. Okay? So here's what we have. It's called the Law of Diminishing Marginal Benefit. So here's the thing. Whenever you make a decision to do something, you get, for the first time you do it, you get a marginal benefit. And a great example, I think, uh, is eating pizza. Okay, so let's say that you go to a party and you're hanging out with some friends and there's a lot of pizza there and you can have all the pizza that you want because they bought a lot of pizza. You're hungry when you get to the party and you know there's going to be pizza, so you go to get one slice of pizza. So you grab a plate and you grab a slice of pizza. We're going to pretend all the pizza is the same. Whatever your favorite kind of pizza is, that's what all the pizza is. Okay? So you grab one slice of pizza and uh, when you eat that slice of pizza, when you eat that whole slice of pizza, you are getting a benefit. And the, the amount of benefit, or you know, we call it utility, uh, for, for consumers, right? So that bit of utility that you get um, is, m makes you happy. It satisfies you because you've eaten food, right? And the little bit of, or whatever amount of benefit, the little bit of utility that you get for eating that slice of pizza, that is the marginal benefit of that slice of pizza. And here's what economics says. Economics has this, has this theory, okay, that when you go to eat a second slice of pizza, that that second slice of pizza probably will not give you exactly the same amount of satisfaction as the first slice of pizza. It will probably either give you more satisfaction or it will give you less satisfaction, okay? Because we believe, we understand that in most things in economics, uh, the benefit that we receive does not stay constantly the same all the time, okay? Um, and so, when you eat your second slice of pizza, maybe that one's even better than the first one was, and you get even more satisfaction out of it. But let's say that you go back and have a third slice of pizza, and then a fourth slice of pizza, and then a fifth slice of pizza. I know what some of you are thinking. Professor Ryan, I have never eaten five slices of pizza in one meal in my whole life. And some of you are thinking, hey, Professor Ryan, five slices of pizza, I'm just getting started, right? Okay, because we're all different people, okay? We each have a different set of fixed circumstances in our lives, okay? Some of us are bigger, some of us are smaller. Some of us have a larger appetite, some of us have a smaller appetite, right? All right, so here's the deal. Eventually, when we get to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 slices of pizza, okay, now even those of you who are just getting going at five slices are thinking, Professor Ryan, 12 slices of pizza, that's too much in one meal. Now, if you pack up some of those slices and take them home to eat tomorrow, nope, that's a new set of fixed circumstances. Everything has changed now. The fixed set of circumstances are you are at the party and that's where you're eating the pizza, okay? So, um, you know, eventually you will begin getting less benefit from each additional slice of pizza. The benefit, the utility, the satisfaction that you are getting from each additional slice of pizza is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. You're going to be a little less satisfied with the next slice, a little less satisfied, and eventually you're going to say, no more pizza. You are going to say, I don't want any more satisfaction from any pizza. I am done. And the reason you're going to do that is because of the law of diminishing marginal benefit. The little bit of benefit that you get from another slice of pizza will get smaller and smaller and smaller as you keep consuming equal size slices of pizza. So now let's look at our de definition with that little example. So the law of diminishing marginal benefit says that under a set of fixed circumstances, that's you at the party right now. Okay, or, or at that time, okay, you at the party. 
the added benefit, the additional benefit that you get from consuming more and more of an equal resource. That means that each of the slices of pizza are an equal size. So more and more of an equal resource means one, then two, then three, then four, then five. And, and the more that number goes up of equal size slices of pizza, the benefit, the benefit that you get will, here's our sentence, the benefit that you get will become smaller and smaller. You will get a little bit less benefit, a little less benefit, a little less benefit, a little less benefit, until eventually you perceive that you will get no more benefit from having another slice of pizza and you will stop eating pizza at that party. Now, the next day, you may want pizza again because your body's done its thing. It's the next day, you're hungry again, now you can eat more pizza. But that's a new set of fixed circumstances, okay? so. When we are under limited circumstance, just at the party, okay, the benefit that you get from each additional slice of pizza will become smaller and smaller with each unit of the resource added. And so this idea of the law of diminishing marginal benefit basically says that the more that you try to get a benefit from doing something, from some activity, you will, the more you do it, get a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less satisfaction in that fixed circumstance. And so what we have to do as decision makers in, uh, as individual economists for ourselves is we should be cautious not to put all our eggs into one basket, not to commit all of our resources to one thing. And so one of the things that we're gonna learn about in the next couple lessons is the idea of splitting your resources across two or more things so that you can get more satisfaction by getting a mix of goods instead of committing all your resources to just one thing. All right, so here's another great example of the law of diminishing marginal benefit for a business. Okay, let's say there's a restaurant and they, uh, you know, they have a, a kitchen where they cook food and they have uh, um, tables out in the restaurant, right? Now, you would think they want to make as much money as they can and the profit that they earn is their main benefit, but their revenues that they earn are another benefit, right? So the more people that they can get into the dining room, the more money they'll probably make. Also, the more cooks that they have in the kitchen, the more food they can make and then the more money they can make, right? That makes sense, okay? The problem is, is that the restaurant is under a set of fixed circumstances. They only have so, many t so much room for tables and chairs and they only have so much room in the kitchen. They only have so many grills, they only have so many fryers, they only have so many tables, right? They have a limited amount of space in the kitchen and a limited amount of space in the dining room. Okay, now what they could do is they could add cooks in the kitchen. Let's say they have two cooks back there. Well, you would think that if they added a third cook, they could cook more food. Absolutely. They could probably just buy some more food and then have three cooks to cook up that food. They can sell more food. They can make more money. They can increase their their benefit. They can get a little more marginal benefit, a little more revenue from adding one more cook in the kitchen. Well, why don't they add two more cooks in the kitchen? Now they have four or three more cooks. Now they have five. Let's move the number of cooks up to six, seven cooks, eight cooks, nine cooks, 10 cooks. Why not have 37 cooks in the kitchen? Well, if you've ever worked at a restaurant, you know having 37 cooks in a small kitchen is not gonna work out. They're all gonna get in each other's way and they're actually probably gonna cook less food. See, here's what happens, is that as you keep adding more cooks to the kitchen, eventually they start getting in one another's way, and the added revenue of one more cook will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you keep adding more cooks to the kitchen, okay? Law of diminishing marginal benefit. Similarly, 
with tables and chairs in the dining room. Sure, you can add another table with eight more chairs or add another table with four more chairs, but as you keep adding more tables into the dining room, eventually you're gonna run out of space. There's not even gonna be a, a space for people to walk from the door over to their table. And therefore, there's gonna be a limit to the number of tables that you can put in the dining room. And as you add one more table, sure, you may make more revenue, but the added revenue of the next table might be smaller because you're causing clutter. Your servers can't move as fast as they used to. And you can't serve people as fast. You can't get the food out there. People can't get to the bathroom and come back. They can't even get to the table or over to where they pay their check. They're all going to get in their way as you keep adding more and more tables. Therefore, the added benefit of one more table is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller because of the law of diminishing marginal benefit. All right, so now let's talk about sort of the other side of the coin, the law of increasing opportunity cost, okay? Uh, the law of increasing opportunity cost is basically uh, the opposite of the law of diminishing marginal benefit because in the law of diminishing marginal benefit, the resource or the cost that you were, that you were consuming was the same every time with each with each layer every time you did it one more time it was the exact same amount of a resource that you were using and the thing that was changing was how much benefit so now the thing that's the, it's it's the reverse now you're trying to get the exact same amount of benefit with each round every time you make a decision every time you add to that decision or every time you do another step for one more in that decision, you want the same amount of benefit every single time. Well, here's what the law of increasing opportunity cost says, is that if you want the exact same benefit every single time, then every time you do it, it's gonna cost you a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Here's our definition. Under a set of fixed circumstances, so it's a business, and it's the business, it's got the same number of trucks, the same number of buildings, the same square footage on the buildings, okay? Those are fixed resources, okay? Under a set of fixed circumstances, if you want to receive the same amount of benefit, and that's the key, is that you are trying to achieve the same amount of benefit. It's not okay for the first time that you try to do something for you to win 10%. And then the second time you do it, you only win 7%. And the third time you do it, you only win 3%. That's the law of diminishing marginal benefit right there. You keep doing the same thing over and over, but every time you do it, you get a little bit less added on, okay? No, this time you want to go out and the first time you do this thing, you want to win 10%. And the second time you do it, you want to win 10% again. And the third time you do it, you again want to win 10%. You don't want diminishing marginal benefit. Well, here's what this is saying, is that when you try to do that, if you want the same amount of benefit repeatedly, then each round of the equal benefit will require higher and higher costs more and more resources each time. It's gonna cost you more every time that you go out. Here's a, a business example. Let's say that there's a business that wants to uh, uh, try to get out there and, and do a lot of sales and marketing and stuff. They wanna increase their market share by 5%. So they spend $4 million on marketing and advertising and sales, and they do, they succeed. They increase their market share in their industry by 5%. They grab 5% of the pie, right? Well, they say, hey, we have another $4 million. Let's get out there and get another 5% of the market share. Economics says it doesn't work like that. Now, the law of diminishing marginal benefits says that if you wanna go spend another $4 million, you will get, you'll probably get more, but it won't be 5%. The next time you go out, it might be 4% or 3%. Law of diminishing marginal benefit. But if you're sitting in the meeting and you say, what's it gonna take to get another 5% market share? Well, economics, the law of increasing opportunities cost says it's gonna cost more than $4 million. 
Okay, now you might have to spend six or seven million dollars to get another five percent. And then if you want another five percent, that could cost you ten or twelve million dollars. At some point or another, it's not going to be worth getting another 5% and you'll stop and you'll say, no, it's not worth spending $20 million on 5%. We're done. We're happy where we're at right now. Okay. That is the law of increasing opportunity cost. All right. So here's a little uh, chart. It's like a cheat sheet that can help you basically understand uh, the law of diminishing marginal benefit and the law of increasing opportunity cost. All right. Law of diminishing marginal benefit says that if, if, if the cost you're paying out is increasing at a constant rate, you keep, you keep paying out a cost the same amount every time. We're paying out $20, then another $20, then another $20, then another $20, et cetera, et cetera. That if you do that, you know, and we exchange costs for benefits, then the benefits that you receive will increase, but in smaller and smaller chunks. Okay, so as the costs increase at a constant rate, the benefits, they increase in smaller and smaller amounts. You will get smaller and smaller amounts of benefits if you, if you keep paying out the cost at a constant rate. But the law of increasing opportunity cost says this. If you want a benefit to be received at a constant rate, I want the same benefit every single time, then the cost of achieving the same benefit each time you do something, the cost is going to increase in larger and larger amounts costs will be more and more and more. Eventually the cost will become prohibitive and you won't be able to get the next chunk and you'll just stop. Okay. So that is the law of diminishing marginal benefit and the law of increasing opportunity cost.